Well, hello all my model car building buddies. This here is Glenn's Models. I'm Glenn, and I'm the world's only living think. Okay, so much for that. <laughs> um, let me see. Start with uh, Spotlight Buddies up here at SpotlightHobbies.com. Don't forget the .com. They got some stuff in. New things. New things that you got to go check out. So, you know, after this is over, y'all go over to Spotlight uh, yeah, dot com hobbies, spotlighthobbies.com. Y'all know what it is. Dang, it's written right there for the love of corn. Okay, they got new gopher decals. And what in the heck did I write there? Oh, decals. They got decals and decals. They got bumper stickers. And <laughs> I went through them. Some are pretty funny. And they got uh, pinstriping decals. Oh, check it out. Sprue cutters. They got, they got sprue cutters now where you can get those. And I've been needing a new pair forever. And they, oh, and they got the AMT 66 Buick Riviera GS hardtop flavor uh, car. And it's really sweet. That's one that's one been out, hasn't been out too long. Or it's pretty. I don't know. I'm trying to keep this focused and the focus is going crazy for me there it goes oh they also got this cool amt 73 dodge dart short track racer kit car they call it uh chrysler kit car really neat then they got a is shoma wheels if that's how you say it they got wire wheels and they're chrome and gold in the wire wheels they also got the slotted aluminums and the ones that look like Kragers but ain't Kragers and then from Atlantis 1 16th scale Pontiac Grand Am Mickey Thompson funny car oh, oh awesome kit I bought one of those when they first came out in 70 or 71 whenever it was it was beautiful I love that thing man Okay, now we're going to get on with the show, and I want to make a little correction here. I told you about my buddy at Rides by Chuck last time, because he's a great dude and has a great channel. I forgot to tell you, and his channel name is at that car guy 13. So you hit that, and then you'll go, you'll go to his thing. Check him out, or chuck him out, either way. And uh, he's pretty cool. I like this. I like him. I don't miss any of his shows because he's just fun to watch. And let me see. What else do we got here? Um, 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 let me see. Okay. I got to show you what I got going on. What I'm working on. I know. I'm just as professional as I can be, which is not very much. This is... This is my uh, drag truck. It's sitting on the on a uh, mongoose, an Atlantis mongoose rail, rear engine rail. See? Oh, I can leave the body off for a turn. Let you see the chassis. Um, yeah, I got the rear end together, and wheels aren't glued on yet, because I got to try to put the brakes on it or something back there. And But I got the, uh, got it painted. And I got the front axle mounted up there. I still got to put the coilovers and the radius rods on it. But I wanted to have the axle on so I could set the body on it. And show you what he's going to look like. <laughs> That's it right there, I'm pretty sure. It ain't too easy to set the body on and off of it. Okay, yeah, there it is. I'm going to let her go around one time. Whew. Oh, I know. I can bring it up a little bit, too. Man, this thing is going to be cool. I, have, I haven't I have got too many clues about how I'm going to paint it. Oh, wait a minute. The body is not sitting on it right, or it would, it would be sitting on it right. There and there. Okay. I hate I hate it when it there now I can pick pick it up come on yeah now body <laughs> it was sitting flat on the deck there Ford I really like this 
This is going to be so bad when I get it painted and decaled up. Ain't a whole lot more to do. I mean, most of what I've done so far is trying to make everything fit. And everything fits. I still have to cut that hole a little bigger back there. And uh, get the motor up through it. Because I'm pretty sure the valve covers are going to stick up through it just a little bit. And the plug wires. Okay, well that's it for this guy. Say bye. Hello. I didn't say say hello. I said say, say goodbye. This is going to be one of those shows that's starting out weird for me and everything. But don't worry, I have brought my energy pills just in case things, you know, in case I start slowing down. I have my, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Anyway. <laughs> That's going, that's good. That might slow me down a little. Uh, what's next? Oh, this guy. Um, you, you've seen this side already, but this side was messed up last time. You see, it hadn't gotten a uh, smear on it. I thought I went and put this smear on, and I thought, well, you know, it would be a good thing to say is how, how I got how I got it down to this, this curve right here. See how it rolls under? On, on this side, I, I, I used my mutagen, and I'll remind you what that is in a second. I took on the, on the, scoop it up on the spreader, and I wipe it off against this line this way, and leave a, leave a bead of it. And I come down here and wipe off of this line real heavy, and lay a bead of it, and then lightly smeared across, as you can see, it dug out a little bit. Come on, man, with the focus. This is stupid camera and you can see it still needs a slick out uh these are the low spots and i just put another coat across the top of this and it'll fill all these in and then i can go back and sand this round and that's the other thing i wanted to point out see how this is a sharp i got a sharp line here and i'm running a a sharp line up here and across here and down here and across here and all the way down this line because when you're doing bodywork on a real car or a model and, and you got all these different character lines, it's best to leave them sharp all the time you're sanding it and stuff. That way you can look at it. See that? That's straight. You can tell it's straight just by looking. And yeah. And then when you, when you get it ready, then you can just take your sandpaper and just lightly go over the sharp and take the point off of it, you know, to where it, to where it rolls over more like this does. I just wanted, I want, I was working some Bondo on this or Mutagen on this. And I thought, hey, I ought to, I ought to splain a little. You know, I'm not very good at splaining. So, okay. And this, okay. Mutagen, this, it's not baby food. And don't try to feed it to you, baby. But what you do is you get, I'm going to have Thing help out here a little. You want to help Thing? Oh, yeah, I'll do it. Okay, you go. No, I, I do the talk and you point. Yeah, okay. You fill this up. He's a good boy. You fill this up halfway with Bondo, okay? Halfway with Bondo. And you go up here to right about the top of this label. And actually, it's where it rolls over. Fill it up there with resin. Or a little less than that with resin. Depends on how thin you want it. See, what you're doing, just like you put thinner in paint to thin it, you can put resin in Bondo to thin it. And I know you think, well, I need it thick. But you need, you also need it with the re the fiberglass resin in it. For one thing, it'll stick better. How many times have you tried to sand Bondo or any other filler and it peels away right there at the edge where you're trying to feather it out? See this? This is feathered out. It sticks. Okay? That's one of the things, is it sticks really good. It sands good. Only downside is, is while it's drying, uh, it's sticky on the outside, you know, but you can sand that off. And, uh, yeah, let me see, is that everything? Oh, you don't use the hardener that comes with the fiberglass resin. Don't need to. Just use the hardener that comes with your Bondo. Bondo. Just use that. It works just as good. You won't have any problem with it. And uh, I'll show you over time. Look at this. This is all mutagen right here. And it, it's 
stuck on there real good. And as you can see, I easily shape it. Okay, and I'll show you other things I make with that because you can make a lot of stuff with it, you know. Now, on uh, Herman's Wrecker, he's, he's over there on the table. But <laughs> I got these things. My buddy Morrill, he made, he made these labels. Now, I'm going to have to... There it is. I got my background. Is it going to come in? Come on. Okay, I'll try it with my hand. Because this is cool. These are really cool. A little gas can. There it is. Arsenic. <laughs> and I got one that says... What is this one? <laughs> Beak of Raven. <laughs> That's cool. So cool. And these, these go... These will go in with the service station and in the back of his, of his wrecker, cyanide. Potions. And the last one. I had six, but one hit the floor and I can't find it. And poison. Come on. Come on. Oh, this, this is the stupidest camera in the world. Okay, poison. Did I say that other one said potion? Oh, it does say potion. Okay, potion and poison. Yeah, two of those will go in the back of Herman's Wrecker. The other two, other three will go in the service station. Speaking of, I was, I was speaking of the service station. Let me back up the whirly jigger a little bit. Pull this out. <laughs> I'll never get it in with this up here. Hang on a second. And put this under the table. Set this back. Okay, this is the base. What I, I painted the outside of it and the floor in here. I went, kind of got some dirty spots, you know, oil stains. And then I painted the store part, uh, black and gray checker. Um, the the Munster garage here, Munster's Towing and Performance is in, done in black and white, just like the show, you know? I figured that was what, one of the things that was so cool about the Munsters, they was in black and white, and it reminded you all of old-timey horror shows. Here's a side wall I'm working on. I got it painted sort of to look like gravel, I believe, and I painted the doors and the bottom here, but and the trim with the black, so it's still black and white. And, uh, yeah, I got decals. I got all kinds of decals and posters. Plus, I need to do some weathering on this black at the bottom because it's too new looking. And here is the front of the place. And they pa painted it the same way. Except this is white up here so I can put the name up there. And got some busted out stucco with some bricks behind it and over here. It still needs a lot more work. Got a little crack running up there and stuff like that. You can't tell it, but it's dirtier around the edge because of smoke coming out from all the experiments and stuff. Anyway, this, this is a good start on the Munsters towing and performance. I got a bunch more stuff coming, and I'll show you everything that goes on as it's going on. Now, I gotta show you something, man. This is so cool. Uh, I need my jigger back up here. Come here, Whirly. Come on, boy. Up. Oh, good boy. All right. Let me set these. Ah, oh, man. I, things don't work out really well all the time here. <laughs> what do you think, Thing? Yeah, I agree, man. It, it's not going too good. I should let you do more talking. I hear you. Anyway, I got this. You remember that when I showed you how, how I make a, a straight front axle and springs? This is what they was going on. I'll flip it up here in a second to show you. Excuse me, I burped. Oh, I'm doing the acid reflux. It's terrible. Mmm. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay, see what I done, 
<laughs> there's no rear end. You think the drive shaft being missing is bad. Now I'm leaving out the rear end. There's the front end. That's, I know it's a little plain being all black, but that's what I wanted. And I got the wheels on it. And uh, what else? Oh, that's about it, really. I painted the interior. It's mostly just black because I didn't want to. I'm not worried about the interior on this. I'm going for a look. This will be a car that the cat drives on the street, maybe even to work and back every day. And then at the weekend, he'll take the street tires off and throw some slicks on it and do a little drag racing. Why not? And uh, I hadn't come up with a motor for it yet. I'm kind of thinking about, I have a Viper motor, a V10, and I'm thinking about putting that in it with some uh, velocity stacks. I'd like to see 10 velocity stacks sticking up through the hood. I think that would look wicked awesome. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, let me see, what's next? Uh-oh, that's all the next. Have I run out already? No, not quite. Oh, me. Um, let me go through my notes here. And I did that. And I did that. I'm not going to do that. And... Oh, I do have a story, but that's not for a minute yet. I want to thank my uh, Red. I, I should have had his, his shop card out. Red. Oh, man. Hang on a second. I'm going to get his shop card. Okay. He, red. Scale Scrapyard. Parts are parts. And, and there's his. At Scirocco Red. And... Red scale scrapyard at gmail.com. Okay, and he sent me these dealies here. He said he thought I could use them. He seen me building all these front ends. You, you're gonna love this. These are some, I'm guessing, 3D printed parts. And uh, I'll tell you what they are in just a second. Hang on. Just, I got big fingers and a little compartment here. Okay. Spring perches. Yep. Not the kind in spring and not the fish, but the, these are <laughs> so little that you can hardly see them. Glue that on the frame and then your leaf spring will sit right down in there. Oh my God. I've been making these from, for, from scratch for so long that I'm really glad to be having some. There's two different kinds. Come on. Shamo. Look at that. Now the last one come in great. And this is the this is the other one. This is a front spring perch. The other one I showed you is a rear. It's what your shackle goes on. And then this beautiful little creature here. Spindel. Now you remember I, now go back to where I did the front axle. And you saw I put the axle and it had the little knob on the end of it there. And then I showed you how to make this part. Well, the heck with that, man. <laughs> Y'all need some of these because this is what I'm going to use from now on. It put this on instead of that part I made because, oh, wait, I got one right here. Where's it at? Where's it at? Hang on. I'm getting it. Yeah, I used them on this axle. Look at that axle. This is a dropped axle, it's bent in the middle, but I use those spindles and they look fantastic. Oh man, I really like that. And so thank you, Red. You're a good old dude, you know that? No matter what everybody else says. I, I'm kidding about that last part. There's also some other stuff in here. Um, let me see, now where am I? Oh, okay, well it's story time, I guess. Is a short one. It won't take a minute. So, uh, let me see. This guy, he came up. We had a shop at our house. And uh, we worked at the Ford place. But at night, we'd, we'd work some out in a few hours out in our shop every night. And we was out there working, trying to get a job done. And this guy come pulling up. I told Diane, so I'll go out and see what he's got. And uh, went out. And it was a guy... He couldn't get his AC to work, his air conditioner, and uh, he'd been all over Tupelo to all the different uh, dealerships and repair shops, 
and nobody could fix his AC, and he was out $300 just on them testing it, you know, and because uh, they do that. They're going to make money off of you no matter what. And uh, so he was already out about 300 bucks. So he'd heard that me and Donnie could fix just about anything. So he thought, I'll give him a try. So he came out, asked to look at his AC. And I went out and looked at it. And it only took, it, it only took a minute. Um, I asked him to sit in the car and turn the AC on, click the switch on, and then back off and then on again. I wanted to see what was happening, if the compressor was kicking on. And it wasn't. But when he clicked the switch, I heard a little fizzle, a little electrical sizzle, and I traced it, and I looked down right there in front of me on the top of the course support, right out in plain sight of anybody that looked. Like, this is your course support? Phillips head screw right there, a little eyelet with a little black wire running to the air compressor. <laughs> running to the compressor. And it was sizzling. So I put my thumb on it, and I give it a little turn, and the compressor kicked on. And I go, whoa, what'd you do? It started working. And I said, come here and look at this. And he got out the car, and he come around. I said, what'd you find? I said, you see this little Phillips screw right here? Watch this. Like that, and it click, come on. I said, that's all it is. This is a ground, and it's just loose. And Donnie tossed me a Phillips, and he brought me one, because we both remember how much it hurts to pull a Phillips out, tell you what. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> all I had to do was tighten that Phillips up a quarter of a turn, and then he had his air working again, and he just could not believe it. He'd walk around in circles with praise and everything, saying, I cannot believe you guys fixed that. I've had it everywhere. And so he hands me 40 bucks. I said, dude, I didn't do anything except tighten the screw, and it only took me a minute. He says, I don't care. You just saved me a bunch of money, so take this money, and he gave it to me, and he left. You know, I thought that was nice. I don't like to charge people for something I don't do, though. And I really didn't do much to <laughs> tighten the screw. But it gave me a good story. Anyway, oh, man, I tell you what, I've been doing everything I can to stay young. I'm 71, you know, and it creeps up on you. But I'm doing everything I can to stay young. I have my Spider-Man underwear and I got my Spider-Man pajamas that I wear. I eat my I eat my uh, dessert before my dinner, and sometimes they even have cotton candy for breakfast. So I've seen all the kids. I've seen all the kids and stuff are wearing these thongs, tongs, and I thought, well, you know, I'll give that a try. I'm I'm hip, and so I went and got me a pair a pair of these tongs that they got there all talking about, and put them on trying to be cool and I tell you what man after five minutes these things came back off there is no way I don't even see how the kids are wearing these things man it, it, it was painful I, I'm telling you it might have I may have scarring well <laughs> on that note I'm going to ask for you to please give me a subscribe if you love me you'll subscribe to me and you don't even have to love me to subscribe to me just tolerate me a little bit and um let me see share do now do like my dad always told me he said share with your brother or i'll slap the piss out of you so y'all share and uh comment share oh yeah give me a comment let me know how i'm doing so i'll know how i'm doing and let's see share subscribe comment and what's the other thing um Oh, man, my memory is so bad. Get a new memory. That's it. Okay, share, comment, subscribe, like. Give me a like. If you like it, give me a like. Okay, well, I'm going to go, and I will see y'all later. Love y'all. Bye.